I give happiness, and then I take a life. The woman thinks as she walks down the street on the way to the dating agency. Those that succumb to my allure deserve everything they get, she muses, impressed by her own heartlessness. They come to me, desperate, like hypnotized fools, enchanted by my deadly charm. She catches a glimpse of her reflection in a store window, appraising herself for the effort she's made to look beautiful and serene in her aging years. Pity those idiots, she says under her breath, as if speaking to an audience, because anyone who falls for me will soon get bitten and die. The woman walks into the agency, exuding confidence, elegantly dressed, dolled up for the profile photo she'll soon be taking. So what kind of fella you looking for? Asks the agent, completely unaware that he's setting someone up for a death sentence. Hmm, she replies, knowing full well what kind of man she's looking for. It's not as if she hasn't been through this routine countless times before. She turns to the agent, feigning innocence, and tells him, Well, I'm not a rich lady, and life is hard being a single woman without a proper income. So I think I'd like to meet a guy who has a certain amount of wealth. Oh, and just to keep things uncomplicated, it'd probably be better if he doesn't have any children. In her mind, she's chuckling, thinking they won't get me for this. And even if they do, and hang me, I'll die with a smile on my face. Men, men have been the bane of my life. They deserve to die. And that was one of the ways Kahei Kakeki, probably the world's most deadly Black Widow serial killer to date, found her men. Over a decade, she racked up around $8.8 million from the men she killed, making her certainly the richest Black Widow. She made men fall for her, and she was a genius when it came to that. Before she killed her man, his will would state that everything he owned would go to her. The term Black Widow when related to murder is given to a woman who kills her partner or husband, just like the female Black Widow spider may kill its partner. Those female spiders sometimes engage in what's called sexual cannibalism, meaning they sometimes kill and eat the male they've just mated with. In Kakehi's case, we must use the plural partners and husbands. How many men did she dispatch? Well, we'll get around to that soon. She was born on November 28, 1946, in Kitakyushu City on Japan's Kyushu Island. She grew up in a middle-class family and got all the things she needed when she was a child. As she neared her late teens, she wanted to pursue a career and before that gain a higher education, although her father clung on to old-fashioned values and told her she must forget about education and find a good man to settle down with. Kakehi dutifully followed her father's advice, except her idea of settling down was perhaps not what her father had envisioned. Her relationships never seemed to last very long. Over the years, she had a serious relationship with up to 14 different men, and many of those guys died a mysterious death. Kakehi would support herself in between relationships with a job as a bank teller, fitting for a woman who would spend the rest of her life taking other men's money. Her traditional father wasn't too happy that his 21-year-old daughter still hadn't met a man and let him support her while she did the traditional womanly thing and had children. Lucky for him, though, a few years later she would meet the man of her twisted dreams, or so it seemed, and finally settle down. Did she have murder in her mind at first sight? No one can be sure, but there was only one way this relationship would end. Her father was delighted, though, not only because she had settled down, but because the guy she had met soon went from being a truck driver to becoming a very successful entrepreneur with a fabric printing company. They also had two kids together, and to all that knew her, she was living a very ordinary life. That was far from the truth, though. She had a bloody plan in mind. There's something you might not know about the fabric printing industry, and that's the fact that something called potassium cyanide, a colorless, sugar-like substance, can be used for dyeing and printing. This poisonous substance would come in handy for the world's worst black widow. You might also not know that death from cyanide poisoning can look like death from a heart attack or other natural causes, and the victim can go in a matter of seconds. As any former Soviet spy would have told you, when you want to get the job done and you want to get away with it, cyanide is a wonderful thing. In 1994, when Kakehi was 48 and her dear dire of a husband was 54, the man was taken into the hospital after suffering from a heart attack, or at least that's what it looked like. After seeing a doctor, he was soon deemed to be in a fit state and he was told to go home. The heart attack had been minor, he was told. He was lucky. Sadly, after checking out of the hospital, he wouldn't make it through the night. After her husband's death, Kakehi took over the business. But over a period of nine years, she ran it into the ground. Business was never her strong point. Murder was. Kakehi was broke and down on her luck, but just a year after her business failure, a silver lining formed around the cloud above her head when she met a 66-year-old man who worked as a pharmaceutical wholesaler. The unfortunate man had met Kakehi through a dating agency, one of many dating agencies she would go on to use. The relationship lasted around three years, but then the love-struck gentleman died suddenly from what was thought to be a stroke, another type of death that cyanide poisoning can mimic. 
To those that knew Kakehi, it was starting to look like she had some pretty bad fortune when it came to husbands. At least they thought she inherited fortunes when her beloveds passed. Before their time was rightly up, the problem was whenever she got hold of her lover's cash, she squandered it, making bad decisions on stocks and investments. Kakehi mourned her loss in public, but at home, she soon began cooking up her plan to meet another guy. She was no spring chicken at this point and was approaching 60, but in a country where people tend to live a long time, there was no shortage of aged, single, lonely men. The lonely old man industry in Japan was booming then, and still is today. Her modus operandi never changed. She would get spruced up for the photo and tell the agency she was looking for a childless man who was self-made and financially secure, or at least must earn above 80000 a year. He had to have his own place, although she always said she didn't much mind if the man had a pre-existing health issue, and she would of course take care of him if need be. She soon met the ideal man, a 75-year-old named Toshiaki Yamamoto. He was down on his luck and feeling all alone when Kakehi seemingly became his perfect match. The guy was smitten with her, obsessed with her sultry charms and her way of making him feel wanted and secure. Unfortunately, the relationship didn't last long, and this old boss who ran an agricultural cooperative suddenly dropped dead from a heart attack just three months into their marriage. We don't need to tell you by now that he didn't die of a heart attack. While married to Yamamoto, she had met a man by the name of Toshiaki Suehiro. Yep, she was a cheat, and it wouldn't be the last time she'd cuckold a guy. In 2007, Suehiro suddenly collapsed in the street, as one might do when they've been poisoned with cyanide. But the man didn't die right away this time, and for two years he was kept on life support. He would, however, die of cancer, a convenient turn for Kakehi. In 2011, she met the wonderful Mr. Masanori Honda, a man who also ticked all the boxes at the dating agency that Kakehi was using. The two got engaged after six months and just as love was blossoming, the man went out for a bicycle ride and never came back. The cause of death was said to be an abnormal heart rate or what's known as arrhythmia. There wasn't really a pseudo mourning period this time, because when Kakehi was engaged to Mr. Honda, she was also seeing a sickly man who'd once worked as an architect. This man, one Minoru Hayoki, died in 2013 after having dinner with his lover. The death certificate said Mr. Hayoki had died from his cancer, but that's highly unlikely. Something in his dinner might have pushed him over the edge. Just weeks after old man Hayoki met his end, Kakehi married yet another man and he would be her fourth and final husband, and the man whose last name she would keep. She would have his surname when her world turned upside down. Their relationship lasted a matter of weeks before Mr. Kakehi suddenly died from what looks like natural causes. We should say here that the police and the media don't exactly know just how many men Kakehi dated or killed throughout her life, but what was becoming quite apparent was the fact that this woman had something of the Medusa touch in her. The fact that didn't escape the media, and not long before Kakehi was finally arrested, she was interviewed by a Japanese newspaper. The poor woman was asked about her ill-starred affairs, and it was pointed out that it was strange that so many of her lovers and husbands gave up the ghost so soon after meeting her. Kakehi replied, saying, I want to know why all these things happened. I want to make it clear, I'm not the type of woman who wishes to remarry. As it happens, people that I met happen to have a strong desire to marry. That, of course, was an outright lie. She was the seducer, not the men. The police were now on to her, and they went to the hospital where her former partner, Mr. Suhiro, had spent two years on life support. The hospital still had blood samples from this man, and it was soon revealed that cyanide was found in his blood. Now, things started to make sense. There was nothing they could do about the men whose bodies had already been turned into ashes. When Kakehi was finally arrested, the cops found traces of cyanide in the trash can at her home in Kyoto. The police also discovered medical books at another apartment in the same city, books that contained advice relating to poisoning and the administration of drugs. At the time of her arrest in 2017, she was dating another man already, a guy that had fallen head over heels for her and told the court that she seemed like a really sweet lady. The police even unearthed an email she had sent to him that read in part, I will stay with you for the rest of my life. What she really meant was, I will stay with you for the rest of your life. The trial lasted 135 days and hundreds of people queued up to get inside the courtroom. Kakehi was eventually convicted of three murders and one attempted murder for Mr. Suhiro. As you can see from this story, it's likely she killed a lot more people, perhaps as many as 10 husbands and lovers. During the trial, Kakehi was asked by a journalist, but didn't you feel fear when you killed people? With an angered expression painted across her face, she replied, You are bold enough to ask me such a question? At first, she refused to say anything at all in court, but the evidence was conclusive. In the end, she admitted to killing her last husband 
telling the court that she was greedy and gave other women his cash. She admitted to hating her last husband, although she didn't comment on the other men she'd been accused of killing. When she was told she was going to hang by the neck for her crimes, she acknowledged that and told the court that she would die smiling. She then said, please hang me. Alas, she withdrew her statements and her lawyers argued that she had dementia and didn't know what she was saying, in spite of her being so calculated when finding men and quickly dispatching them to the afterlife. Maybe Japan didn't want to see an old woman hang from a rope, and it hasn't happened yet due to the fact that her lawyers managed to persuade the court that her dementia diminished her responsibility. As we speak, the Black Widow's home is a prison cell. In 2019, a judge in the Osaka High Court rejected Kakei's lawyers' claims that her dementia played a part in the murders, and she still may hang. The case is ongoing, keeping the Japanese public on the edge of their seats. Now you have to watch this show, America's Strangest Serial Killer, Ed Gein, The Butcher of Plainfield. Or have a look at this, the most evil person in the world, the Bikini Killer.